Hello, it's all Andy the Silly Moustache again. Um, first of all, thank you to everybody that reprimanded me about having a glass of orange juice on the sofa. Um, I, no harm occurred, but uh, I have my essential glass of water with me, but it's not on the sofa. Sorry about that, won't happen again. Also, I'd like to say thank you so much to the 737 subscribers I've got now. And um, my little channel has um, is approaching 129,000 hits. It's taken off like crazy, mostly with my uh, video about why I like 12 frets. Well, um, I want to talk to you, um, oh, I, I, I should say that there's a gentleman on the UMGF the unofficial Martin Guitar Forum, uh, whose handle is Swayaday, who um, and AK on uh, YouTube, who um, has recently acquired a Triple O Twenty Eight VS. That's essentially th this is Collins' version of this guitar. This design was introduced by Martin in 1902, and. Um, is in production today, as far as I know, as the Triple O Twenty Eight VS. Essentially the same instrument, twelve fret, wide neck. Um, this Collings has a one thirteen sixteen snit and a uh, two and three eight string spacing. I have my nineteen twenty four Martin uh, catalogue, and I'm going to look up the style twenty eight which was $80 in 1924, um, and it was, in 1924, it had a 1 and 7 eighths uh, nut width, um, and the scale was, as it is today, 25.4, 25.5 on the Collings. This was the largest bodied guitar you could get from, um, uh, from Martin, between those times until the Dreadnought uh, was reintroduced after Ditson had failed. Col uh, but Martin brought it out in 1931 until 1934 in this format. 12 fret Dreadnought, the original Dreadnought, which is my personal favourite. And the point I wanted to make really is that I believe that Martins really, really thought about their designs. They didn't just knock them together or um, copy the uh, the market or whatever. They responded to the the market, and this became a um, this was introduced because of increasing um, interest in uh, guitar as a musical instrument. Um, as a solo instrument and uh, was being um, played to larger audiences and so that meant larger venues like auditoriums. So this is called an auditorium guitar which means it's loud enough or projects suitably to be played to hundreds of people without a PA system. Now a little example of this um, some years ago I went to see Stefan Grossman in an old Victorian theatre um, somewhere northwest of London and there'd been some sort of mess up and there was no PA system available. At that time he was playing double O and triple O Martins, um, probably from the twenties and, um, and he stood up on the stage with his two guitars there and said, I'm sorry about this, there is no PA system. So if you want to go and get your money back, the box office is ready and waiting and we will refund you completely. But if you'd like to stay, I will play here unamplified and hopefully you will hear everything that is necessary. Well, pretty much everybody stayed and yes, we did. We heard every single note beautifully. In fact, we probably heard it better because we were so focused on it. <clears throat> so it can be done. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about these guitars um, is that 
uh, I was quite struck by a video made by Chris Martin, whom I deeply respect, um, which is called A Word From Chris, The Dreadnought Centennial. And listen to every word that he says there, because he said that up until the 14 fret Dreadnought, Martin worked really hard to, to make instruments that sounded good, played well, and had an even balance across the strings. But with the 14 fret Dreadnought, he said that, to use his words, went out the window. So there was a much more bass biased um, sound coming from the 14 fret Dreadnought. Beautiful, but different. Collings, my preferred maker nowadays, um, still keeps that ethos of having balance across the strings. Neither is wrong, neither is right, but they are different, although Collings plays tribute with all of their makes to uh, both Martin and, and Gibson, of course. So I'm going to play a little tune on the triple O, and then I'm going to repeat it on the Dreadnought. And I hope I'll manage it. I've got a lot of trouble with my left hand at the moment. Excuses, excuses. This is a little instrumental that I composed some time ago called um, uh, Waltz on Little Pony Mountain. Mitchy knows, just as I started playing. Um, <clears throat> now I'm going to try and do the same thing on my Dreadnought. Both the same woods, um, Sitka and Indian uh, Rosewood, uh, and both of a similar, this is a 2007, the Triple O's from 2003. You know, not, not an awful lot of difference. This one has medium strings, and the uh, medium strings John Pierce's, I favour Dario, which are on this one, EJ16s, EJ17s. And a slightly heavier pick. Blue chip tad 50 on this, blue chip tad 40 on that one. twice, never mind, just listening to the tone of the guitars. And I want to talk about a thing that I don't quite understand, but I believe it exists. The difference in a musical instrument between volume, which we associate loudness, seems to go with cubic capacity, we use the same word for it, volume, <coughs> and the projection. When Stefan Grossman sat there with his small 20s guitars in that large Victorian theatre, um, 
we could hear every note that was played, and I believe he had a double O and a triple O with him that night. But I've also seen very large guitars that seem very loud close up, but sound seems to come out and fall on the floor in front of the player's feet. Now there could be a number of reasons for this. It could be, of course, the um, uh, the, the hall, the venue itself. Um, it could be dead strings. It could be player's style. It could be something that the maker is or isn't doing. But I do believe that whilst you will probably have heard a little bit more bass and middle from the Dreadnought, the triple O was really thought out very hard by Martins to give not only adequate volume, more than adequate volume, but also that projection. Not a parlor guitar. This is an auditorium guitar. And so that's basically the question that I want to ask here. I'm not going to sit here and propound and tell you what is and what isn't. I'd like your opinions and your comments about the different tones, if you like, of the two guitars. Not worried about your preference, state that if you like. But, I keep picking it up and putting it down. Um, <clears throat> but let's have some discussion about your thoughts about loudness, volume and projection. What you prefer. Uh, bearing in mind that there is a lot more volume in a Dreadnought than there is a Triple O. And um, your thoughts about 12 fret guitars if you like, but we've got another video for that. Anyway, that's all I want to say at the moment. Uh, so uh, let me have your thoughts and I uh, look forward to reading them.